Good evening, my name is Josh Pettis, I'm the Executive Chef here at the beautiful Devil's Swim Ranch in Tabernacle, Colorado. This is our signature restaurant, the Ranch House Restaurant. We really feature a lot of our, co our uh, Wagyu beef, which is raised right here in the ranch. What we're going to do today is we're going to go ahead and make a beautiful 24-ounce uh, bone-out ribeye right here off our ranch, from the Cattle River Ranch. We get the whole cows when we buy them from head to tail. So what we have here is we utilize everything, and this is rendered down fat from the ranch, from our, our herd. I'm gonna season this nice. Beautiful marble, beautiful fat. A nice hot skillet. We feature several different cuts from our, our cows here in Ranch House Restaurant every evening. Sometimes they change as we go through them because we do sell a lot. Um, but we always have cuts on hand. And it's always right here from our ranch. What we serve these with, we, we do sell by the ounce. So we cut them to order as you, as you need them, as you want them. So once they're cut, we get a nice sear on them. You also have the option to put it on the grill if you wish. It's entirely up to our guests. And we serve those with Yukon Gold shoestring potatoes and a nice little salad. Very simple, very elegant. So we want to get a nice caramelization on this. What that does is when you sear your meats or you grill your meats, when you get the marking on it, that brown, that's the natural sugar and the protein in the animal. So you want to really get that natural sugar in there. It gives it the beautiful uh, texture and the beautiful flavors draws it out. We also do a social hour, which is somewhat of a happy hour here at the ranch house. We do it on the tavern side with a lot of nice small little nashi bits, homemade cheese stuffed pretzels with nice beer mustards. We do nice charcuterie and cheese boards to a nice tarragon shrimp salads, small plates, share plates, beautiful place to sit down. It's nice and quiet, very comforting and home feeling. Um, and it, it, you have a nice, beautiful handcrafted cocktail. You have several different bourbons at the bar, a very nice selection. And then you can come over to the ranch house and enjoy some beautiful wagyu. Let's see if it's ready to go. So there we have a nice, caramelization and sear on that. Like I said, all that browning, that's all flavor, and that's the natural sugars in the protein. Depending on the size of the meat and everything, but a nice, for all of the folks that like to cook meat at home, whether you're grilling or if you're doing seared, a lot of people like their meats medium rare, as we all know. So what you can do, it's a nice little trick, whether you're grilling it or searing it, if you're watching the top of the meat and when you begin to see little droplets of some of the blood coming up, it's medium rare. It will rest up to a perfect medium rare every time. You never flip it if it's resisting coming up from the pan at all, right? No, and, and you know, a lot of problems that people have, especially when you in the summertime, when everyone's anxious, they pull out their barbecues, and I get asked this all the time. Chef, I let my grill go for 35 minutes. It was piping hot, and I took my, my proteins out of the refrigerator. I had a marinating all night, and I brought it out to the grill on a very hot grill, and I put it on the grill, and it stuck. Why? I, I did everything right. The grill was very hot. It's marinated with some oils. And I said, well, here's the key. You said you took it out of the refrigerator, brought it to your grill, and put it on your grill. The trick is you really need to take your protein out, let it get to room temp. Because what happens is if you take a very cold piece of protein and put it on a grill, that drops the temperature of that grill, no matter how hot the bars are. So you're not gonna you're gonna have that barrier of cold, and you're always gonna have problems with it sticking. So always get your meats and let them get out to around room temp or close to, and then put them on the grill. So if you look at the beautiful caramelization we have there, 
We should probably be about two minutes away. I suggest you let your beef rest. You let it rest, it helps come up to 10. And you let it, it'll all relax in the muscle. It's, it's what happens is you take your protein, just like if, if you walk out into the cold, what do you do? You feel the element. Same with other proteins and heat. It stringes up. So you want to let your beef relax, let that blood and the proteins get back into the entirety of the beef. You know, some people, they don't let it rest, they cut in their steak, and there's that big eye that looks almost raw, just because it didn't relax well. How long should you let your meat rest, typically? I typically like to, at least, depending on what temp you're looking for, but typically I would let it rest if you can at home, five minutes, a full five minutes. So what we do in the restaurants, we do this, we call it a resting pan, you can do the same thing at home. Just have a pan with a little rack in it, and the reason why you want a rack is you want the drippings to go down, and what happens if you put it directly on a flat surface, you're going to be steaming the, the, the bottom of it a little bit. kind of takes away from the whole the texture and the, and the sugar. So it's far beautiful there. We're going to go ahead, we will let that rest for about five, five to eight minutes. Okay. Wonderful. Now our meat has, has gone ahead and it's rested, so it's, it's nice and relaxed. And now we're going to go ahead and plate it. See the beautiful texture and the beautiful caramelization. So when you slice your meats, you always want to go a little bit at an angle. As you see, it's perfectly cooked, it's nice and rested and relaxed. You always want to cut against the grain, no matter what cut you're, you're, you're going ahead and carving. And always take pride in how you do your plating, no matter who you're putting the food in front of, because that is a representation of you. Look how beautiful that is. Wonderful. So now we're going to go ahead, we're going to move it over, and we're going to plate it. take a nice little reduced shoe which we use we make with all the bones as I said we we purchase the whole cows because it's off our ranch and we utilize everything we can in fact this meat was cooked in the fat that we render down that comes with the cow we just do a nice little drizzle of this highly reduced jus we don't want to take too much away from the quality of the meat and masquerade it we just want to give it an element Handsome. Finish that with a little bit of nice sea finishing salt. Some nice cracked black pepper. How many days did you tell me it takes to reduce down that that jus? Our jus from from start to finish takes between four to four and a half days. And then once we get it out of this, the the pot and the kettle, we go in smaller batches and we reduce it to really bring up the cows and get it nice and stodgy, if you will, a high flavor profile. That way you don't need to have too much jus on it and you don't want to masquerade the meat. You just want to help bring it out a little bit. And what we serve that with here is we do a nice little herb vinaigrette with some Colorado organic greens. Coming right out of the, the ground here in Colorado. Nice kind of ranchy shoestring potatoes. Keep it simple, flavorful, elegant. Put a couple tomatoes on the salad. These are also Colorado organically grown. And here you are.